welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and today's car is this, the Maserati MC20 Cello Edition. So that means, the Cello means it's the convertible edition and it has this wonderful fold in the roof. It's a glass roof that goes opaque or clear. We'll have a look at that when we go outside. And I think it just looks fantastic. Every time I see one of these cars, I think the design is off the scale. It's beautiful. And I think it, this particular one is enhanced by this color. Rosso Vicente is this color. It is an optional color on this car. So I, I've got this car back in, partly to test the cello and see what it's like in convertible form, but mainly to have another go in MC20, because I did have one in December last year and the weather conditions were a nightmare. It had, we had snow on the ground, it had wet roads, salty roads, and it came on winter tires. And looking back, it really quite compromised the test and my experience of this car. So I was really keen to get it back in before the salt arrived and on proper summer tires. So that's why it's here. Let's go and have a closer look. Now you do have to pay for those looks. I ought to just mention the list price on this car, 230,290 pounds before extras. Extras on this car, 70,570 pounds, little bit of tax to pay as configured, 305,795 pounds and over 300,000 pound Maserati. Now, a lot of that extra price on this car is what they term the exterior carbon pack. And you see that at the front here, this use of carbon fiber around the mouth of the Maserati. And then down here with this splitter coming around here. If you come round, another extra on it are these 20 inch wheels. I'm not exactly sure what the standard wheel is like. I'll put the configurator shot up here. Rather annoying, if you go on the Maserati configurator, you, there's no pricing on anything on the MC20 when there is something like the Gokali and that sort of thing, or Levante, but not so on the MC20. But they're extra £3,800 for those. And then this carbon seal is also part of this extra carbon pack. One thing I have to mention, having lived with the previous one and now this one, boy, does this car like to get dirty. It has an open wheel arch, there's a grill. I can see the tire treads from here looking into there and it just shoots mud all the way down here. If you're in Tuscany in July, I'm sure it's fine. If you're in the Cotswolds in October, it's not fine. And this car is forever. I've just watched it and I open the door and you think, oh, this mud is all here as well. So yeah, if you're fi finicky on having a clean car, you're not going to like the MC20. And I like the way they've done this double buttress look and the roof just folds away and it folds away at speed as well, up to 30 miles an hour. The downside is I can't show you the engine. It hides under there. I've seen it on the coupe version, but it's not visible on here. And you do get two boots on this car. I think before we look at the rear, I'm just going to show you the front boots, which fooled us for a bit because it's actually a mechanical lever there rather than a button. And there you go, <laughs> tiny, tiny little boots. Um, so yeah, that's not a lot of good, but that's where your goose uh, sits if you have a, uh, unfortunate enough to get a flat tire or a um, toe, you need that. Whole car is carbon fiber, I ought to mention as well. You can see the carbon fiber here. There's a proper weave on the actual panel and then this peculiar sort of pressed carbon fiber panels. We'll see it all over, you saw it on the door as well and on the boot as well, so yeah. There, let's go around the back. Very clever design here. I, the one thing that surprised me on this car, there's no aero, there's no sort of spoiler coming up here. There's no active sort of area of any sort. And you think for a 205 mile an hour car, they might need something on there, but no, they have a sort of diffuser, but it's not an almighty aggressive type of diffuser. It's just a lot of carbon fiber, the twin exhaust, and it's got a boot here as well, which I have to open on the key. There is a button inside should you want it. Um, quite a small boot to say the least and I have noticed in my time with it it gets very warm in there because of the exhaust. It sits right above the exhaust but again you can see the carbon fibre weave on here. Then you get, if you're wondering what that camera is, we, the rear view mirror is actually a camera or conventional mirror. Didn't work at all on the coupe, the conventional mirror, but on this one, you can just about see out. And there's a little window there that you can lower as well. But yeah, that's a quick run around this car. Let's take it outside, take it for a drive. I 
I love the theatre of those doors, dihedral doors are just the best. I mean, they're not quite so good when you've parked in a normal car park and you've got cars either side of you because you suddenly realise you try and open the door and you can only get to about there and you can't get out. You do need more space with these doors. But apart from that, they're fantastic. And then in here, yeah, it's funny, when you first get in, it's slightly plainer than you imagine. It's it's very business-like in here. There, are, yes, the the iPad sat there, but it's sort of it hasn't got all the frills and craziness going on as some cars are getting these days. And it's a good seating position. I'm in the right place in front of the wheel. The pedals are dead in line. It's good seats, not crazy bucket, uh, mad carbon seats. Uh, simple console lack of buttons really because everything is through the screen no ventilation controls that's all on the screen and these gearbox controls and suspension i'm going to wake it up by doing that motors forward yeah the electric steering which i commented on before this super light city like steering that we get on this car now all cars really and i've grown grown about this in the kakali as well you have to accept in all maseratis the disclaimer before you get anything come up which is a bit of a ball um yeah and this is where you control the screens the roof i'm actually going to do this test with the roof up uh, because all the cameras are stuck to the window and the windows are all the way down so it's all goes a bit chaotic but i do like the roof if you look at the the roof here i have a controller here i don't know if you can see that i might do it when you can i don't know if it will show the color but it goes clear i can see out and then i can't see out very very clever that uh, what else have we got down here? We've got radio controls down here, windows as well, gearbox, and then a suspension options on here, and you can actually change damper settings. And you, I can I can charge my phone, which is good. And I've got a glove box. Nothing in it though. MC20 there. Speakers back there. Yeah, no no space behind. Some of the extras. I just noticed on the extras that wound me up was. See that logo there, just the embroidered logo? £850. It's your flipping logo. Why do I have to pay £850 to have it on the seats? But there we are. That's all part of it with modern cars, I suppose. Anyway, they can charge a little bit extra, and they will. On the wheel, I've got launch button, and I've got start, stop. Uh, volume control here. It hasn't got those controls behind the wheel, weirdly, but I do have the big paddles plus and minus there, and conventional stalks that rather annoyingly don't stop in the same way. They don't actually move, They like BMW ones, they stay stacked. I'm going on, I don't think there's anything else to declare in here before we set off, no. So, let's get going. Right, foot on brakes, pull a paddle in and drive. And off we go. Right, beautiful day for it. Head out and you'll join me a moment on some better roads. The immediate impression with this car is it's easy going. As soon as you get moving, there's a sort of lolloping feel to it. It changes down the gears, it's more relaxed, the steering is sort of slower, the ride is cushioning, starts in this GT mode and it's a bit of a surprise. It's not like the frantic, sort of Ferrari-esque uh, sort of feel to it. It doesn't feel uber sporting right from the off. The only thing you've got is quite an aggressive sort of engine that gets going. Now I'm going to squirt up my heels. I'm now going to put it into sport. And then it does gain a different character. So I like the way I've got these alternatives to try out. So I'm still in drive mode, all in auto. Let's see what happens. Suddenly the character changes, as you can tell, uh, as soon as you select sport. And I can't get over this engine, I'm just going to put it back to uh, GT mode just while I'm talking. I can't get over this engine, but it is incredibly highly boosted, and yet from the off it just has more torque. You know it's turbocharged, you know there's no infill, but it has a, a more aggressive move off the line than you expect just on part throttle. You need to look at the specs and if you're into engines, amazingly this highly boosted engine has a compression ratio of 11 to 1, which is really high. 
that's high for a normally non-turbo engine, let alone a turbocharged engine. And I think it's just an incredibly clever engine. The, the guys who were, were at Ferrari and, and came across to Alfred Maserati um, to, to do this engine, hats off to them because they created a very special power unit. And it does deliver the performance as well. They quote less than three seconds to 62 miles an hour and open the excess of 200 mile an hour top speed. to try it out. So I'm going to put it into, I have to put it into Corsa. There we are, we're in Corsa. It makes you think about Corsa, because I don't think the launch works if you're not in Corsa. Let's see what it will do up here. So this isn't the best surface to do a launch, but uh, right, I press the brakes, I press launch. everything apart from its power delivery which is just mental. Make some interesting noises as well it's always puffing and puffing the turbos you're very aware of the turbos there. And it, there is a sort of V6 sound to it but it's got a deep sound it's not like 296 it's a distinctive sound to this engine it's not super tuneful but it definitely has its own voice. fighting weight, and weight is another one of my dislikes in this car. They made it incredibly heavy. You look at the spec and it's all about lightweight and carbon tub and etc. And they declare a weight of 1,540 kilos. Well, I put it on the weight bridge and it was 1,760 kilos. It was 220 kilos over the quoted weight Maserati put on their tech sheet. That's not on. Absolutely not on. 
Just coming up to my corner, so I'll shut up for a moment. gear changes. I mean it goes around there but you're conscious that you have quite a lot of weight. You feel it in the brakes because they're a bit softer than you want them to be. There's a bit more travel and I wonder if again it's that weight. I think it limits the traction. There's all that torque and it just can't move this giant mass forward fast enough and you get wheel spin. and no electrics. A 296 with a battery and everything is 100 kilos lighter. Okay, the roof, folding roof, does add 65 kilos to a normal coupe. But yeah, not really happy about that. But there's so many lights in this car. The looks, like drop dead gorgeous, isn't it? I mean, no, we can't help. And in this colour, it's class itself. As you see it go down the roads. I love that about it. Other likes, just the chassis setup. That idea that you, it is a GT that you get immediately on stepping inside the car. It, it's so suitable for today's car. We're not always on race tracks, so I think that's very clever and a very clever distinction between them and perhaps McLaren and Ferrari. What do I think about this car? I'm, I'm frustrated. But I'm, I think it's beautiful. I want to absolutely love it. But it's typical Italian cars, it's also frustrating, it's madly frustrating with the way it delivers its power, it's manic power, which is a sort of positive, but it's just too much at times, and it can't quite cope. And I, and I can't get it in my head around what it is. Is it a GT or is it this crazy performance car? If we look at it as a GT point of view, it's got a 100 litre boot on it, so that doesn't really work. It's got the luxury and the folding roof and all this for the cruise down in France and Italy. But where are you going to put anything? And the other maddening thing about it, what am I looking at? 16.3 mpg. You will, you've got a tiny tank, 60 litre tank. So you'll be filling up every 200 miles if you go gentle. On the motorway you're doing about 24, but you start using this power, and you will, because it's just there and it's so tempting and it's, you know, you just want to enjoy the turbocharged nature of this engine. Shut up again. Oh. And yeah, you're in the low teens then and you'll end up with an average like I am of 16 mpg. So there you go, I want it to be this wonderful Maserati GT car with a, you know, real huge amount of performance when I actually want to use it. But it's compromised, too compromised for me to give it the sort of 10 out of 10 mark. It's another 8 out of 10 Maserati, much as I love it. And that price also really counts against it. It's a £300,000 Maserati. So there you go, that's my review of the MC20 Cello. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming very soon.